In this video, I'll be showing you my study of the Illustrator Ask and my process in drawing something similar based on what I've learned. In this case, I'll be analyzing my favorite image from the Illustrator, which is this image. I'll be studying this image and trying to uncover the hidden techniques that goes into creating this illustration. And as a result, recreating a similar illustration of my own using the artist's style. We will be going through image study, rough and line art, shadows and colors, and finishing touches. In my attempts to really understand the image, I used the Fabian technique tracing to try and guess each of the artistic decisions that goes into making this image. And from this study, I found lighting and coloring, pose and line art, and shadow most intriguing. The image has a strong light source from below, perhaps from a spotlight. To give the feeling of a fashion shoot, the shadow casted from the character is simple but very effective at showing the space that she is in. This simple shadow shows that she is right next to the wall or perhaps a white backdrop of sorts. The bright lighting also allows for really vibrant and saturated colors. Another small detail is the green tint around the character, especially in the gray part of the costume, the highlights and the shadows. These small details show how the spotlight has a slight green hue to it, which is casting a greener tone onto the character. The character's pose implies motion. The pose and the flowing hair together creates a really dynamic image. For the line art, I feel like any hard pressure brush will work fine. The line is fairly thin, with thicker parts around some edges and shadow areas. The thinnest parts are the hair and details. The contour lines are usually thicker than the rest. I've tested out different ways of recreating a similar shadow to the image, and decided to go with Multiply Blend Mode for shadows. Using Blend Mode is simply faster than painting without one. However, I couldn't get the same exact color as the one used in the artist's illustrations. So perhaps it wasn't Multiply, or perhaps the color was brightened and fixed in post. If we look at another of the artist's illustration, we can see that the shadow clearly interacts with the text. And the simplest way to do that is for the shadow to be on a blend mode, like multiply, so that when the text moves under, the shadow simply wraps around the text effortlessly. And finally, I found this technique of blocking in shadows with multiply mode through the artist Kakake, which is great because it confirms that this method was used professionally. So I will be following this method of painting by first filling in the shadows on the multiply mode, then fill in your base color, and finally change the color of shadows. In the end, it comes down to what fits with your style and workflow. And in this case, I think it would be one of the simpler and quicker methods. I often draw rough from a 3D model, but in this case, I wanted a dynamic pose, which a 3D model wouldn't be able to achieve. So instead, I went around Pinterest and in the end, chose this pose as my reference. Then sketched the rough based on the image. Then for the line art, I simply traced over my rough while keeping the outer lines thicker and the inner lines thinner. As I mentioned before, I will be mapping out the shadows and lighting first before putting in the color. To do this, I started off by creating the contact shadow on the wall first, as I thought it could help with keeping the direction of the light consistent while painting. So here the shadow implies that the strong light is coming from the bottom left hand corner. I did this by warping the shadows, keeping in mind that the legs are closer to the wall while the head is turning away from the wall, so that the shadow casted by the leg is closer and the head is further. Then I added a stroke effect onto the shadow. Lastly, I used Gaussian Blur to make the shadows and the outlines softer. Next, I filled in my base color. After, I created a clipping mask to change the colors of the shadow. I then added a pinkish hue to the shadow to imply that the light is a warmer pink color. Another factor to which color to choose also depends on the contrast. Here the initial shadows was too dark around the white colors, so I decided to choose a brighter color for that area. The edges between light and shadows are even more saturated to emphasize on the effect of light fall off. This is also seen in the artist's illustration. Here I also added bright white highlights. To summarize, the colors are essentially just three layers. The base color, the shadow on multiply mode, and the highlights on top. And for the final details, I changed the color of the line. I made parts that are in contact with light a little brighter. I also added stray hairs, then adjusted the hue and saturation as required. And finally, added grain to the background.
Although the actual process was rather straightforward, I found this analysis the hardest out of all the artists that I've studied so far. Ask's illustrations were simple at first glance. However, those simple looking images turned out to be hiding layers of expertise underneath. The method I used here worked decently to recreate something similar to this image, but I'm not sure to how well it will work with other images. I hope that you learned something new along the way, which you can use in your future illustrations. If you have any other illustrations or artists that you perhaps want me to try and break down, feel free to leave your ideas in the comment below. That's it. Thanks for watching.